He looks to throw, looking deep downfield. He's got a receiver open. It is complete. That is Stevens for a touchdown. The Bulldog Radio Network proudly presents the Coach Gray Show on 102.7 FM, Carney's hometown radio station. And now, here are the hosts of the show, Mike Davis, Jim Dickerson, and Coach Josh Gray. And welcome to the Coach Gray Show. I'm your host, Mike Davis, and Jim Dickerson is along with, along with me. And uh, Jim is the voice of your Carney Bulldogs. We cannot wait to get started. Uh, we have a brand new stadium uh, across the way over here that I'm telling you, uh, we've seen, m- many of you have seen the aerial photography uh, that was shot yesterday uh, from the helicopter, and uh, it was empty. Now, that's all going to change on Friday night. And I know that everybody that within earshot is exci- is just as excited as we are. Jim, uh, glad that you're here again. You said we're going to be working together, and uh, here we are again, day two. Uh, what do you think, man? What uh, What are your feelings right now? Can you feel it? Can you well, feel the power? Y- yeah, I can. And one of the <laughs> things that's kind of funny is because I remember, and we talked a little bit about it last year when we were in Smithville. Right. We did the Smithville playoff game, and then we left – and we weren't happy. Nope. I'm going to be honest about it. We were a little not happy. And what made it worse was we left the stadium, and you, me, and uh, our executive producer, Brian, we were going to go out and grab a bite to eat oh my, and just yeah. kind of talk <laughs> about the game. I do remember this. <laughs> Everything was closed. Yeah. Everything was closed. And I was like, typical. So we just went home, and that was the end of it. So I got up the next morning, and I know we all did because <laughs> we were texting back and forth. Had my little cup of coffee, and ever since that moment, I've been looking forward to this day and tomorrow. No so. doubt about it, uh, Coach. You know, we Jim talked a little bit about it just now. He referred to the the 2018 season. It was an eight eight and three uh, season, a, a pretty good finish. Uh, and you went to the district semifinals, and certainly it wasn't everything that you hoped for or any of us for the rest of it for that the rest of us for that matter but it's a winning program and uh, one of the things that i find that is particularly interesting about high school football is that these teams your teams graduate a good number of their team each year and they effectively become uh, it becomes a bit of a rebuilding program but for a few key positions so it would it, it remains to be seen i guess how do you as a coach and how does your staff go about maintaining the high standards that you started last year and continue the momentum with really a different crop of kids yeah you know i don't think we probably don't view it maybe the same as a as a, a fan or, or yourself sure. as far as uh, trying to rebuild it's right. more you know the next guy's up the next guy the next yeah. guy that's been in waiting um, it's putting them in position now for their, for the, uh, for their year, like typically a senior year. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and it's more, you know, not to sound cliche of, it's not a rebuild, it's a reload. And there you go. And, and we kind of, yep. uh, put that piece in there and, and the kids understand that. And, um, you know, it is, it's tough because each year, obviously, regardless if you have, uh, a number of kids coming back or a few kids coming back, You've got uh, it's a new team, and they've got to understand that whatever happened the year before doesn't exist. That was the year before, and and each year is a new start, and each year uh, the team's got a new identity, and to figure out what that identity is, and and the common factor from year to year is is our kids uh, work hard, and that's you know um, that's an important piece that they understand and they learn that at a young age, and um, we've got some young classes now that are you know, preparing themselves uh, for their opportunity. And, and we've got a lot of depth with some young kids that, that are on their way, you know, to understanding that and what it takes. And um, it's kind of ends up being a mentality of, so it's not a rebuild, it's a reload and, and the next guy up. So, um, you know, we, we look at it that way. And, you know, last year, you know, we had a solid year. It's not the way we wanted to end and, mm-hmm. and definitely not where our expectations are. You know, we have high expectations of, you know, of ourselves as coaches and, and definitely as a program as a whole um, of where we want to be and where we want to, you know, inevitably finish up. Sure. You know, the funny thing is you say that, and by the way, 
Welcome back. Thank you. It's good to have you <laughs> it's back. It's good to be back. But uh, you say that. I, I think I, we were talking about this a little bit yesterday. I think being a high school football coach from the coaching perspective has to be one of the hardest coaching jobs ever because of what you just said. So you are strapped basically with what you get. Now, I realize there's some people who move into the Kearney yeah. district and yeah. all that for the the education and the, the program and the high school, the football program and all that. But still... That's very limited. Even at the college level, uh, people so you you can recruit and they go out and they select their college and you get you know coaches, we need this guy, all else. that right. stuff. Professional is just one step better. Right. You get who lives here? Who? <laughs> what do we got? That, so I mean, that is. I think it's awesome that you're able to build a program off of that. And not only that, as if that wasn't bad enough, you're getting them because we noticed that the jamboree. Some of these kids over one year, right. we were like, "Who is that guy? I've never seen him." <laughs> we're we're going to talk and about I was a like, couple. Yeah. He's huge. He grew yeah. over the years, so you're 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 getting them in their, I guess, developmental years. Right? How you do that is is beyond me. <laughs> well, that, that like you said, that's the, you know, the beauty of it. You know, part of it, you you get who you get, and and you like that for the fact that you know, you know, I feel, um, carny kids know how to work. You know, mm-hmm. wh- whatever that means or whether that's, you know, the families, the, the upbringing, the, you know, they, they buy into working hard. They buy into the coaches. I mean, that's across the board of whatever program you're looking at. Right. Um, but there's a lot that can change between, I mean, you got to realize we, we're dealing with 16 and 17 year olds and, <laughs> and right. finally 18 year old, you know, maybe yeah. some 18 yeah. year olds and, and, you know, they develop a lot over a one year's time and yeah. especially one year's time in the, in the off season, in the weight room, in the winter and in the spring and, um, and over the summer, how they mature and how they grow and how they kind of, all of a sudden the light bulb comes on and, and click things click and, um, you know, they, they and grow there's and people, eat. There's some people like me and the light bulb didn't come on until I was like <laughs> 24 or something. I was gone. <laughs> well, one of the things too, that, that we knew about from last year is that you have a feeder program. I mean, with, with the young bulldogs, I, what, what did you call them? The puppies, you know, the, <laughs> and, and these guys are. They're, yeah. they're out learning a, a very fundamental version of your offense, of your program overall. Right. And that includes conditioning. It includes uh, the, 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 you know, learning the right attitude and learning how to play the game and be smart. And That's work, a key component. And, yeah, and work hard. So uh, many of these kids have the fundamentals. They have the, uh, the things that maybe you can't, that, that you can't measure so much. Uh, by the time they're a sophomore or a freshman, because you had a you had a freshman that started last or that played last year quite a right. bit, as I recall. Uh, when these kids are up there at that point, then uh, it sounds like you that the, the foundation uh, is is there for the most part. And we're fortunate, you know, we have a good as far as our eighth grade program and our freshman program. We have uh, great coaches at those levels and and are able to get them out. That's a key component, right? Um, and and our numbers at those levels are as solid as they've ever been. I mean, we've had. 50 some eighth graders come out this year and we've had 40 some freshmen out. So, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it, it's, they understand it and they, they thrive on that and 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 take a step further, even back um, with our pop Warner program and with the uh, flag football programs. um, They do a great job of getting the guy, the the young, young kids involved in it and liking it. And, you know, that just kind of carries on as they, as they grow through the program, if you will. And yeah. is there a lot of, I assume there is, but I, is there a lot of cooperation between the coaching staffs of the younger where you're saying, hey, here's, so you guys are all kind of building toward the same thing? Right. Do you guys work a lot together on that? So with our eighth and ninth grade program, um, yeah, we like during the camps and, and we have meetings throughout the summer and we do with our camps, they're getting uh, the varsity coaches coach those camps for those the eighth and ninth grade um, with, with obviously with help with the, with the eighth and ninth grade staff. Um, but one thing that we do with our, with our pop Warner program, um, is we put on a coaches clinic, um, for the pop Warner program coaches, um, where we kind of go over our, our offense and our defense, um, and give them drills. And, and it's been a great, great thing to have, um, their involvement with us. Um, but more importantly that they're, they're learning what we do and they take a piece of that back. Um, to their respective age groups uh, within the Prop Warner program, and and that's been something. You know, obviously they got to tweak a little bit from what right. we do, right? Um, but the the verbiage, the you know, the drills, some of the things that we do, they implement and they kind of hear some of those things, so that you know, when they get into eighth grade, they've heard they've heard some of the same terminology and yes. they know what things are, and that's a big piece. Um, and we're thankful for that, and we're thankful for that. 
you know, for those coaches that, that are, that want to be a part of that and uh, are accepting of that and, and willing to, to, to understand that it's, you know, for lack of a better word, one team, one town type of yeah, right. or one program. Well, one because town. that way you're not, I mean, you guys have enough to teach as it is. So you're not having to teach from the ground up a whole new system, a whole right. new program right. and all that sort of thing. So right. that's got to be real, real advantageous. Yeah. Big word there. Well, <laughs> nicely done there, Jim. <laughs> you know, uh, I think yesterday when we were on the air with Carney Live, Jim and I were kind of joking around and asking people, you know, send your questions in on facebook live and ask the coach about the quarterback well as it turns out there, there already was an announcement i guess we just we were under a rock or something but you have made an announcement and you have a starting quarterback for this year yeah, we do. To, let's tell us yeah about it. we uh you know uh going through the the off season and through the you know our camps and and obviously um we had three very you know talented individuals right. um we just felt that you know for us that where we were at and what we needed that was going to be best for the team and where we fit the best for, for everything for the whole program is um, Ian Acosta, um, sophomore Ian Acosta is going to be our, our starting quarterback uh, coming out tomorrow night. And we're excited about that. And obviously he's very fired up and um, you know, he's done a great job. I think with, with Ian um, only being a sophomore, he brings a lot of poise to the game. He brings um, a lot of confidence in himself and his abilities. Um, and the, and the team is really kind of, um, offense has really kind of gravitated to him, and mm-hmm. and it and it's and you know he's done a, done a very nice job. Yeah, now he's come through the the entire this system, right? Yeah, the, the, yeah, yeah. So, oh yeah, he's he's a product of what we were just talking about just a few minutes ago, and uh, and it shows. And so here he is as a sophomore. I mean, you you could say that's a, he's an underclassman, and uh, and yet here he is. He's prepared uh, for this moment and it's not too big for him now you mentioned to me off the air before we started that over at the jamboree that uh, you were you were kind of testing him and you you asked him you said yeah hey, hey, hey. <laughs> and he gave him a little elbow and said hey you nervous yeah i you know i, I try to early on not now now i'll stop kind of jacking with yeah. those quarterbacks <laughs> yeah, yeah. a little Pro- bit probably a good idea but you know um i try to get in their head a little bit and see yeah. what they're thinking how they react to a few things and yeah. Um, you know, he's a pretty poised kid and, yeah. um, looking forward to see what he's able to do. Yeah. You, you like seeing that. Uh, I think the other two kids, uh, we got a really good look at, uh, Dawson Minert and, uh, I, I thought, um, uh, you know, he looked, they, they, they all is. looked really good. And of course we he's saw a very it. good athlete, you yes. know, uh, Dawson has uh, a lot of confidence in himself and his abilities as well. And, um, he'll be on the field somewhere. Right. So yeah, you know, good, good athletes. Look, yeah. Look, look for him. Yeah. In fact, I noticed on, I think it was on all of your quarterbacks that they had DB also <laughs> slash de- defensive back. Yeah. You on. never know, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, you, you know, never know what happens. Yeah. That's actually kind of typical of a high school roster. Right. We'll, yeah. we'll get the roster yeah. and it'll have like seven different things on it. <laughs> yes, and, yeah. and my favorite part for those of you who do design these programs is when we're up there and there's like number 54, but there's three of them. And so we're <laughs> like, that? I don't know which 54 this is. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, we, we work our way around that. Uh, the other young man that I think we saw a lot of last year, uh, who was also at one point a candidate for quarterback, was John Walters. I should say is John Walters. Uh, so he's a guy that could potentially step in if he had to, if there was a need. Right. Uh, but uh, we saw him play exclusively. Uh, defensive snaps and one of the things that i remember about him from last year is he has unbridled speed a very very fast and football fast player right you know john's a john's a great athlete and you know he's very versatile i mean last year for us he played safety he played some outside linebacker and then uh moved inside against smithville um due to need and you know is is able to do a lot and he's he's very smart kid um, he's got some football savvy to him, flies around, and um, and does a great job on special teams as well. So uh, John's a, a, a very good athlete, and, and you know, yes, he actually, still has a QB next to his name on the I, on, I, in, in the roster. So I can well imagine. You never know. No, well, I mean, you, you got to go at least three deep, I, I would think, and even on high school, mm-hmm. on a high school level, yeah, uh, just to just to be on the safe side. And you want a guy that you know that's accustomed to running the play, right, and then understands the playbook. And clearly, he had. You know, he had a little bit of experience from last yeah, year. Yeah, because there's one. Th- if there's one thing you hate, it's to get some guy hurt, or for some reason he can't play. He gets sick or something, right? And then you have to bring in a guy where everybody's like, "Well, this is because he doesn't have any clue." Right. I mean, he knows the basic 
uh, okay, there's right. five guys over there, and, you know, <laughs> but that doesn't get right. you anywhere. So it's good to have that depth. I feel I think. Well, pretty you, confident in all those guys to be able to step in and, and do what's needed if well, there's ever a situation. Knock and, on wood. And, and we see that. I mean, they're coached up <laughs> to, you know, to, to really understand that the next guy in is the next guy in, right. regardless of the position. And next if it's man up. Right. If it's quarterback, it's quarterback. Uh, I want to talk about the running back position. Uh, first of all, I think there's no secret in this room that last year, uh, one of my favorite players, perhaps my favorite player, was Patrick no, Connery. And no, I, and, no, no, no. <laughs> okay. Because you had the right, Amu poster in your room. And <laughs> <laughs> the Amu poster, that's right. Well, don't tell Patrick. Well, he knew. But, uh, I mean, for a guy that, you know, let's, let's be honest about it, 1,500 rushing yards and 23 touchdowns, that's going to be hard for anybody. I mean, he's in the top 10 of the city last year. Okay, great. Great kid. Loved him. It's a new year. Here we are. Uh, I have to tell you, when I looked at the, uh, there was a Facebook post from your visit up to, that you do every year. It's a camp that you do at Northwest Missouri State University. Yeah. And the teams go up there and they do some scrimmaging with some other teams. And I saw a picture of this year's running back, Garrett Laughlin. And I remembering from last year, but when I saw this picture of him, I have to tell you, the guy looks <laughs> enormous. He looks intimidating. I mean, he looked like he spent all summer in the weight room. Talk about this young man. Garrett, uh, he is one of the harder workers I've, that we've had. He is a, uh, you know, he's a product of, of what hard work ends up looking like, yeah, if you will. It is, right? I mean, you touched on it. I mean, he, he uh, spends a lot of time in the weight room. He does a lot of conditioning. I mean, he is... Um, He's about making sure that he is is ready to go when right. it comes to comes to playing time and spends a, spend a lot of time in the weight room, not only with us but on his own and um, just like a lot of the guys do. Yes. Um, but you know he is uh, he's a he's a pretty he's he go, kind of goes beast mode on on some on some dudes and we, we saw he's, it. yeah he, he he's your running back this year. We're going to take a quick break, coach. You're listening to the coach. The Coach Gray Show. I'm so excited. I can hardly say it. <laughs> and you're listening to 102.7 FM. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Stay with us for these messages. Without the support of community underwriters, we wouldn't be here. So a huge thanks to these particular businesses for supporting KPGZ. The Kearney Chamber of Commerce wants to thank you for supporting our local businesses. Kearney's friendly and authentic small town atmosphere is created by our people and our distinctive shops, restaurants, and services. Local businesses contribute to our quality of life and to the character of Kearney. Shop local, eat local, enjoy local. It takes you to start the trend. Support the local businesses who support the area where you live, work, and play. This message sponsored by the Kearney Chamber of Commerce. Mailing rebates are a pain. Fill out the paperwork and hopefully you'll get your money in six weeks. Kent Porter here for Porter's Building Centers with a solution to mail-in rebates. Ace Rewards from Ace Hardware. When you become a member of Ace Rewards, you'll get all the rebates instantly at the register. Plus, you'll earn points with every purchase, good for even more money-saving coupons. If you sign up today, we'll give you 1,000 free points just for joining. One more way Porters and Ace save you money. Porters Building Centers in Kearney. Porters, we're here to help. Singleton & Son is a company that's ready to help you maintain and improve your residential or commercial property. We're family owned and operated, which means we do all of our own work and we build our reputation with every job we do. Your satisfaction matters to us. Dirt and gravel, snow and ice, lawn care and landscaping. Singleton & Son is dedicated to providing Kearney and the surrounding area with quality services. For more information or an estimate, you can visit our website at singletonandson.com or call Jerry Singleton at 816 3 
I'm Sean Barber, owner of Stables Local Kitchen and Patio in Kearney. Stables is a Kearney thing. We are all about our Kearney community. We love to be the place where people get together. Stables features a full menu with a scratch kitchen, offering lunch and dinner options, as well as a weekend breakfast starting at 8 a.m. on Saturday and Sundays. We are big believers in keeping it local. Stables has been a proud member of the Kearney community for almost 20 years, and we are very appreciative of the ongoing support from this wonderful community. You can check us out online at stables816.com, and Stables is part of the True 816 family. Eat, drink, local. Back to the Coach Gray Show. I'm your host, Mike Davis. We got the ball coach in studio with us today. Coach Josh Gray is here on premises. And my host, my co-host and good friend, Jim Dickerson, the voice of your Carney Bulldogs. Uh, coach, we were just talking about uh, Laughlin, Garrett Laughlin, who uh, it is, you know, just blew up over the summer. We know that. The, guy, the guy's a monster. In fact, I commented on it. I think it was his mother's Facebook page because that's where I saw the picture. I said, what did you feed this guy? <laughs> But he's not the only one. There were some other kids that, that I noticed, too, uh, at the Jamboree yeah. who, who they grow up over the summer. And by the time they're a senior, it's like, good heavens. Yep. Uh, but in any case, I wanted to mention that Garrett Laughlin, who is this year's starting running back, uh, was the Top Dog Award winner. Now, t- tell us about the Top Dog program. What is that all so about? So what, what it is, and we've been doing this for a long time, um, for a number of years, and what it is is we test out over the summer, um, you know, bench squat, hand clean. Uh, we do the forty, we do the shuttle. Basically, it's like a, uh, a co- the combine, you know. The, the, oh, yeah, the, okay. the, and basically, that's what it is. And then there's a point total for how much, you know, where you know linemen may typically not run the forty as fast, mm-hmm. or do the shuttle as quick, or their vert might be a little different, but they may make that up in the weight room. So there's a ratio in there as far as a equation of of point total and how everything kind of balances out. Well, bottom line is, is Laughlin blew it away this year and did a phenomenal job and, you know, was, was our top dog. So the guy with the the highest point total is what that is. And, you know, for him, it's just a testament of his hard work and the things that he does and, um, and what a special athlete he is. Right. Uh, Now we noticed at the, uh, at the Jamboree that, uh, he's pretty shifty for a big guy. I mean, I think we've got him here at, at six feet one ninety, but he looked bigger than one ninety yeah. to me. But I don't know; it's all muscle. Looked bigger than six feet to me yeah, too. Yeah, about <laughs> seven foot two or something but, like that. But for a guy, I mean, you can usually tell. I mean, as, as even from our vantage point uh, up in the booth, you can you can kind of tell. I mean, these guys have tree trunk legs. You <laughs> know that they they got you know that's a football player. Yeah, because you know it kind of starts from the bottom up. It you does. Know? And uh, he's one of those guys that's just got you know these big trunks. And I saw him darting back and forth, making quick lateral cuts. And a guy that size, that's going to be valuable somewhere yeah. down the road, I would imagine. And he's got quite the speed as well. He's right. you know, and he's he's a he can he can run you over. Mm-hmm. He can go beast mode on you. Yes. Um, and he's got some speed on the edge. Yeah. Um, so he's kind of a, a he's he's a real nice mix of style of running back um, of what you're going to see from him this year. And you know, um, he's got a burst in him and and not afraid to lower his shoulder and you right. know he played linebacker for us last yes, year i know that I may remember. be a question later but right you know so he's not afraid of contact and um you know and can deliver a blow well <laughs> and neat. plus he he took some uh, kickoff and punt returns yeah, yeah and i remember last year asking i said what the heck is your linebacker over there taking, <laughs> taking a kick return and uh and he you know, look he's got good hands yeah he I does. Mean, you need a hands guy that's yep. gonna catch that's the right football. and he's he's pretty reliable there and, right. and does a good job yeah so what an athlete so when when uh, talking about the jamboree for a minute, and for those people who uh, don't know what the jamboree is, it's not a full fledged game. What it basically is is they they split the field in half, and then you've got two teams on one side and two teams on the other, and then they what do you do? Eight plays offense, eight plays something yeah. like that defense. Total of twelve plays. Yeah, so, it's so like it's eight, not, and then you bring in however uh, you do right. it. So it's not a full fledged. So I, I heard some people going. Man, I can't believe they lost the first game. Well, there's really no winning or losing because if like <laughs> it's a scrimmage. I think, I think 
at one point they uh, intercepted a ball. Well, you can't return it for right. a touchdown because yeah. there's that would have been a pick six. Though. <laughs> yeah, he called yeah, it. Yeah, that yeah, would have been a pick been, six. Yeah, yeah. But um, More, w- when you guys do the jamboree, kind of from a what? What do you? What? Do you, how are you working it from a coach? What are you looking for? What kind of plays are you? Are you just seeing how they act in a game type situation? What What are you guys doing there? My My feeling is. You know, my personal feeling, I, I think the jamborees are good. What it, To me, it gets some of those nervous bugs out from a Friday night. Right. You kind of have you have a big crowd. There's a lot of going on. Um, you can evaluate some things from that sure. on how kids are going to do. As far as play calling and things like that, you know, obviously there's no real rhythm of the game. You know, like the first eight plays, you know, you'd move the ball. Um, if you get a first down, you continue. If you don't, you bring it back to the 35 and you start all over. So, and if you fumble, you just you fumble, get it right you back. You get it right yeah. back, <laughs> right. you go again. So, yeah. you know, as far as the game flow, there's there's not really a flow of the game, obviously, as, as you can tell by watching. Right. Um, but it does evaluate. It allows you to evaluate some, some of your players in going against other teams, obviously, um, to see where they're at and see how far you've come from maybe camp, when we, like you said, from right. Northwest or – or any other little scrimmages that we've done, right. you know, it allows you to see kind of where you're at and allows you to hit somebody else besides your own guys, besides your own guys again, because <laughs> yeah. they get tired of that. Well, well, I don't know if it's going to get those those jitters completely out of your system because it is a totally different. How do you get? How do you get them? And I think we talked a little bit about this last year. How do you? Because tomorrow night is a big, big thing. It's a the stadium's all redone. There's, I think, there's, there's a new a, stadium. Yeah. <laughs> well, the stadium <laughs> itself isn't new, but the <laughs> the way they've done everything is different. I think there's a new scoreboard. But let's face it, it's Friday night. This whole town comes to a ceasing halt. Everybody goes to the stadium. It's a big deal. I know they, they from a, a teacher standpoint, these kids are probably worthless on <laughs> in Friday. <laughs> Um, well, let's hope not. <laughs> I know a few of them have tests tomorrow. <laughs> That's what I'm I do. Saying. We were talking about it today. I'm like, hey, they're you probably, gotta do it. Be ready. They're just another day. Yeah. You know, they're probably sitting there going, name. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, how do you keep them? <laughs> how do you get them under control? How do you get that the, the nerves down? I think consistency, and you know, being consistent with everything that you do, and everything's. You know, not try to build anything up. It's another game. It's another Friday night. It's, I mean, to me, it's the the mentality that you put out there because it is, you know, it's just like a scrimmage that we did last week. There are people in the stands. You're going to go play football. You know, is it going to be louder? Maybe, you know, but it's just another game. And, and not to build up or be think you got to think about the things that you can control right which is your execution Mm -hmm. making sure that you're prepared making sure that you're mentally ready to go in the game and you're not having any you know you're thinking about something else instead of what the task at hand right um you know and i I wouldn't say preaching to them but i just think it's the you know try to the mentality that we as a as a coaching staff try to to put out there to them that it's it, it's just another game and go, it's, go it's just your another night. It's the do, same. You know, do what yep. you're supposed it's to a, do. It's yeah. the same thing. And I know that sounds easy to do when you talk it like that. And you know, for some it's easy. For some it's you know they get caught up in the moment oh, instead yeah. of, and that's easy to do as a high school kid. But mm-hmm. you know, I think oh you the you, more you, you see professionals do it. right. I mean, you you go to it. You take a NFL. Well, uh, when does the season start next week for NFL? Yeah, it's gonna I be guarantee different. there's going to be a quarterback. They'll yeah. heave that ball in the next week and. Yeah. And that happened. And that, yeah. So you got to come back. And that's, you know, kind of the, you got to have a short memory. And, right. and the next play is the next most important thing. So, you know, and, and just kind of stay into a routine and not, not, you know, get too worked up over the things that you, you're not able to control. Well, so what we need to control now is the test. We've got a test <laughs> I coming. Don't, Study be careful for where you're going with that. Yeah. But, yeah. I won't say their names, but <laughs> yeah. they'll be fine. I know he'll be fine. <laughs> Hey, Coach, uh, it's hard to talk about a uh, running back without talking about your offensive line. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that you have four returning seniors on the offensive line. So we've got, yeah, mm-hmm. there's uh, Hayden Page is right. one that's back. I remember him. Miles. Yep. Um, you yep. know, I had playing time with, with that. Mm-hmm. Um, Evan Pace. And, oh, then, yes. and then we got Jesus Rauscher, who is... Um, who played more defense last year? Kiefer right. Huff is another one that's 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 in there with us. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we got some young guys really doing a great job pushing some of those guys to, um, you know, as far as time goes. I want to come back and talk about those because I, I uh, as we get through this, I'd like to talk about some players to watch. But 
Uh, I wanted to give these guys Evan Pace, Hayden Page, and Evan Miles, and uh, Jesus. You you said Rauscher? Rauscher. Rauscher. Yeah. I, 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 always I apologize, say Jesus. I, I I say his not name wrong. We just want to make Every, sure we get it yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, we'll, we'll mess <laughs> but, it up, too. We'll, but I, I remember we'll apologize him. in yeah. advance. I, yeah. Yeah. So you know. We remember him from last year, though, and I and I saw he was in on a lot of plays. and uh, he's, a good, he's a good football. He's got a nose yeah. for the ball. Yeah, he does. Yeah, and he's got not, a motor, and he's a strong kid. Right. He, that's another one. And it, they're all, I should say, they're all strong because they, they know how to work. And, you know, Jesus gets off sure. the ball, whether it's on offense or whether it's defense. You know, the kid, he's. That's what you want. Yeah. He's a mess Ex- in the explo- middle, man. Explosive. Yeah. Uh, get, get off the ball. That's exactly right. right. Well, I, I'm going to ask you, too. I, I kind of know the answer to this, but for, <laughs> you know, look, you got your, your center who's here from last year. How important is it to have that same guy there? That guy's got a lot on his plate, yes, he identifying and, and making some calls up front for yeah. us. And you know, he is um, that's that's a that's a big piece as far as the yes. up front guys go and that continuity and a guy that's been there and and, and done that and um, does a great job of it. That's, right, that's key. Uh, well, I think so. And uh, some of the you know early press that you know you. I, listen, we, we read what, what's there. So sure. you, we take a little bit of it, you know, we take it with a little bit of a grain of salt. But I, I think some of the things, I think the knock on the team this year is that it's young. Well, we've kind of covered that. Okay, so right. what? We have a sophomore quarterback, but it's a guy that's ready to play. Right. So these people are... are Without a doubt. Yes. So there's no doubt in our mind, but it's an easy thing for somebody who's sure. living on the other side of the city to write something about, okay, well, youth would be you know, a, a, a bit of a, of a weakness. I don't, I don't think so. Personally. You know, and that, not to interrupt your, sure, your no, question no, no. there, but I, you know, I, I think want your answer <laughs> with, with, as far as the youth go, I mean, our guys feel they, they understand. I mean, there's, you might see some other sophomores on the field, mm-hmm. you know, only because that we feel that they're ready. I mean, I, I don't see us putting somebody out there. That's not ready just to put somebody out there. That's right. not, you know, at this at this level at the varsity level that's not how it how it works um you know and, and we've got some young guys that that are able to to do what we're asking them to do and do it do it effectively and that's the most important piece of that and they understand that um you know are there going to be some mistakes well there's mistakes every friday night it doesn't matter if it's a senior that's that's been in the program you know and, and been a three year starter there's right. always going to be you know some mistakes that happen right the key is that we learn from those, and, and as we go through the season, we build on on that and, and continue to grow as a team as a whole. And, um, you know, I think where we're at right now as a team, even with some, uh, with some youth there, we have, to kind of backtrack a second, we have youth every year. We graduate seniors every year. Yes. We have three to four, dependent upon the year, right. of guys that are returning. So that means that we're returning. We've got to find eight or seven or eight, Kids that are right, the same. Yeah, that goes back to now, what we were talking about earlier. That that's yeah. got to be what makes it one of the toughest jobs. Ever. And you're right, is making because sure you, you get yeah, guys in the right spot. Have, I mean, it's, it's not like you can go out and recruit them. Right, you get what you get, and you got to put those kids that are coming up in right. the right spot, and that you know right. that, that they're going to perform well at that position or wherever they're at on the field. And mm-hmm. so, regardless, you're going to have new kids. Right. That's Every fine. year you're going to have new guys that are going to step up. Yeah. Now it just depends upon, is that going to be a junior? Is that going to be a sophomore? Where's right. the need at? Where are our strengths at as a team, as a whole, right. as opposed to, you know, that one position? Well, if that one position may or may not have somebody that's ready yet, not to say that they won't be ready, but maybe they're not ready yet, but maybe a younger kid is. Right. So, you know, you, you kind of have to look at, you're going to get new either. Every year. Well, well, here's another aspect of that. In fact, it, it, as, as it relates to your offensive line, I mean, we have, what did we say? We've got three, at least three guys there. We've got Evan Pace, Hayden Page, and Evan Miles, who are, uh, they're all, all returning right. from their positions last year. That's a pretty good nucleus. It, it is. Now, now, how important is it, and, and how are those guys sort of coached to be coaches or to inspire and mentor the younger fellows that, that come up behind them? And we, you know... That's funny you bring that up because um, we got – so I, I spend more time on the offensive side this year. And so with that being said, I'm, I'm over there a lot more. And right. I hear and I listen. Sometimes I just sit back and listen uh, to the team offensively because, right. you know, to see how, you know, how are we gelling, how are we, you know, are we learning, what are we doing. Um, and the old linemen, all of them, are very vocal with 
anybody who rotates in with anybody with that whole group. So the old RO line guys do a great job of coaching them up. Right. Um, coach Backus, our old line coach, does a great job in, in, in mentoring those older guys and being able to teach those, mm-hmm. the younger old linemen, whether they're a junior or, you know, maybe a sophomore that's not even there, but they're always coaching them up. And that's, you know, that leadership on the offensive line is huge. Um, especially for those young guys, you know right. I mean? They're hearing the starters and, you know, coach them up. Uh, you know, you got five guys out there that that's just another voice of, of coaching during a, you know, during a specific drill or, you know, team time or whatever that group time may be. Right. Uh, I want to get back over to the defensive side of the ball uh, and we're, we're coming up on a break, but let's real quickly, let's talk about Colt post. He's, he's re, your returning nose guard. And uh, he, he's a guy, the kind of defender that, you know, you love to see he plays way, way bigger than his size. Yeah. Remember last year we said, I said, wait a minute, coach, is this right? He's five, eight, 200. Yeah. And he said, no, that's right. That's yeah. him. But, but he's got tremendous leverage. We yeah. watched him play and he's playing right in the middle of the defense. He's yeah. the guy that's just got his paw in the mud <laughs> and he gets, he's after a nasty it. dude. Yes. He's yes. A nasty, he plays that position with an attitude and he, you know, he's, he's strong, right? Um, but he's quick. He's you know he's not. He's kind of the best of both worlds, right? Um, right. At that nose spot, as far as size and, and quickness and and strength and ability, for yeah. sure. I I remember uh, Jim and I uh, we we called his number a lot on on making tackles, getting yeah. in the backfield, being one of the first guys back there. We we called him on getting double teamed. Yeah, triple, oh, he splits triple, that. Yeah, yeah. he'll yeah. split that double yeah. pretty quick. Yeah, so it's good good seeing him back. You're listening to The Coach Gray Show. We are so glad to have you here. We are glad to have the coach in studio with us. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thank you. We appreciate the support of local underwriters like these fine businesses. Since opening our doors, TDR Auto Plaza has made major changes with a full service department open to the public and we have brought in more late model and low mileage trucks and cars for our customers. We know there's a lot of places you can buy a vehicle, but we're your hometown dealership and we're there for you when you need us most. We've been helping our neighbors drive dependable vehicles and save money year after year. TDR Auto Plaza, 801 North Country Avenue in Kearney. The phone number is 816-903-3300. TDR, your hometown dealer. Changing the way used cars are sold. So we really want Porter's Carney Body Shop to be your true neighborhood body shop. Yeah, but most people have heard that before. What's different about Porter's? Your vehicle is a big investment. We know that. When something needs fixing, you want to know it's going to be done right and that you're getting the right deal too. So how do I know Porter's is more than just words? You'll get neighborhood service because we are your neighbors. Whatever the make or model, our job is to keep you on the road, not in the shop. Porter's Kearney Body Shop, 104 West Main Street in Kearney, 816-628-5621. Porter's, where customers have been driving away happy since 1982. Hey, it's Mike. My team just pulled off the biggest upset ever. Nice, Mike. And some fans are getting crazy. They even flipped over a car. Whoa. Turns out it's my car, though. Oh. But I don't want to be upset right now. I want to know if State Farm's going to take care of this, right? We got you covered, Mike. Yes! Woo! Go with the one that's here to help life go right. State Farm. Tracy Tucker, State Farm at 751 Watson Drive, Suite D in Kearney, Missouri. 816-903-5550. Football players know linemen are vital to the team. We know that too. Platte Clay Electric Cooperative's mission is to empower communities and energize life with safe and reliable energy. And a vital part of our team working to make this happen includes our dedicated linemen. From building new lines and services to restoring your power, even in the worst storm conditions, our trained linemen are vital to the success of your cooperative. Platte Clay Electric Cooperative. For more information about our services, you can visit us online at www.pcec.coop.
And welcome back to the Coach Gray Show. I'm your host, Mike Davis, in here with Jim Dickerson and Brian Watts, who's running the board right now, doing a terrific job because he's got all this video going on. It is fun to watch. I, I don't think I'm glad I'm watching it. Let me put it that way. He's he's making me tired just watching I him run all the buttons. This over guy there. is getting good. He's a techno nerd. Look at him go, <laughs> uh, Coach. We were just talking about Colt Post, who is the nose guard, a returning nose guard, which we love having that guy, the yeah. center of your defense, coming back. And uh, you got a ton of other guys. There's a couple of other guys uh, names that I remember from defense. Uh, Corbin Bevan. He's six three. Oh, yeah. 6'3", 215, and uh, he's he's your inside linebacker. Yeah, he's our right? Mike linebacker. Okay. He's yeah. Let's we're, talk about. We're him, very yeah. we're very excited to have him back. Um, this year had a great season last year. It right. Ended a little early for him. Uh, he broke his broke his foot, leg, lower leg, at, that, towards that the end of the year. Before yeah. the Smithfield. That's yeah. right. That's yeah. right. Oh my goodness, I forgot. About so he's that. back. Yeah. He's stronger than ever, and, and he's definitely ready for his senior season. And and does a great job of of kind of leading that crew right. um, uh, out there. Yeah, big guy. You can yeah. tell. Oh yeah, uh, you can find him. Well, I know, and you know, <laughs> and I noticed on your roster, I don't see you don't have the weights and the heights, but right. they they show up in different places on, on sure. the internet. You can find anything on the internet. That's in right. case you didn't know. It's on Facebook. I'll see if I can right. get you a, get you the uh, the other copy I got. I'll, I'll send you fun. another copy. We have a great time, kind of looking at the weights and trying yeah. to trying to say, is that real? Is that is that, is that too much I, or is that too? All right, not to not to break up your <laughs> let's question, do, but, let's do. but we uh, I told the. Uh, the guys that do the roster for us right. and uh, the coaches that do that, they, you know, you know, we don't want to guess this has got to be an accurate, I don't want to inflate it or underflate, you know, I want it to be accurate. Yes. Off. So everything that, that I'm going to send you is going to be off their physical. So that, that is doctor signed off on, all right. on, on the weight and height. All, so all right. well, it'll I, be official. So it's not going to be like it is on TV. Like uh, you watch Monday night football yes. and they're yeah. like, you're like, He's not 360. That's right. <laughs> uh, we, we did see, I think, out of all the high schools that we saw last year, I think maybe we saw one guy that was over three bills, and there was no doubt about it. Yeah. And they had, they had him down marked, I don't know, at like 325 or something like that. Or, I, I don't know. I saw a guy at the Jamboree. I think he played for Liberty. And that guy had, some, had some to be guys. Oh, he was dudes. huge. Yeah. Yeah. Huge. Oh, mercy. Uh, so Corbin Bevins out there, he's going to patrol the inside linebacker and uh, KJ, KJ Smith, mm -hmm. uh, he is a sophomore. Yep. So he's the freshman that I kept seeing That's last right. year. Yep. And, he came uh, in and, uh, uh, did some running back for right. us last year. Yeah. Right. And, uh, really, really speedy guy. Uh, talk about him a little bit. You know, I think with KJ last year, moving a freshman up, typically, yeah. you know, we Big don't, deal. we don't do that, but yeah. out of necessity last year, we needed to, and it got him some great experience um, on a Friday night. You know, he was able to get in on in some games on Fridays, and you know, KJ is a pretty good. It, I shouldn't say pretty good. He's a good athlete. Right. Um, you know, I think he's he's smart. He's quick. He's fast. You know, he's physical. He's not afraid of you know whether he's playing defense or offense. Afraid of contact, um, and, and does a nice job and is and is smart and is football savvy as well. And right. and that's you know that that makes it easy when guys have a football sense and have some uh football IQ um that makes coaching them a lot a lot better you know i mean that's obvious but you know it it makes a it makes a big difference and and KJ brings brings a lot of that and he brings a lot of energy to the field as well he, he sure does and i remember it last from last year too and and calling his name and i think Jim and i double did a double take on the our rosters because we said wait a minute that guy's a freshman and uh yeah so so yeah. here he is uh, ready to suit up and uh, and and do a little bit better this year. Hopefully. That's right. Here's a guy, Caden Borchard, uh, who is a junior, and I may have him marked. I had a couple of guys marked on here. I, I, I went out of my way at the Jamboree to circle a number to say, Coach, this guy's a beast. Yeah. And Caden Borchard, uh, number 28. Yep. He's uh, now he, he had a couple of carries too. He, yeah, he was uh, he, he played a little bit of running back. Yeah, 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 on, exactly. On, at the Jamboree, but I saw some things in that guy from a distance, and I thought that's a player. Yeah, he's he is uh, another smart football player. Yeah. He's got a lot of set. I mean, he's just very intuitive of what's going on and what's right. around, and you know, he's kind of a tell him once and he he gets it, um, yeah. and he's got a motor on him and and plays plays hard and plays fast. You know, he, he got in some time uh, last year towards the end of the season when we kind of maneuvered some guys around okay. um, at the end of the year uh, with Bevan kind of going down and, mm -hmm. and got some playing time. So he's been he's been under the lights and been in the 
Uh, Play, playing against some of the better teams. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And, you know, we're looking for obviously some great things from him this year yeah. um, and what he's doing and, and has really shown that he's very capable. Right. I, I really like the looks of him, though, at uh, that night. At, yeah, he kind of he kind of yes. got, got his swole on uh, over the summer. <laughs> He's, that, you know, he, he's, he's kind of clicked. Guy, yes. He's kind of one that kind of clicked a little bit. And, exactly. I got to write that down. Yeah, he, his he, got, got his he, he got a swallow. Yeah, I'm going to use that. <laughs> and there's another guy here. Uh, he's a senior, Colby McBride, uh, 6'1, yeah. 200 uh, junior. And uh, let's talk about him just You know, he, he was uh, last year, he played some free safety for us, mm-hmm. and we moved him. Um, he worked hard in the off season. I'm gonna say that a lot because, right. but well, you know, it is what it is. They worked, yeah. they worked hard in the off season. He put some weight on and and did a nice job. And is right. is kind of him and him and Alex Evans both have kind of understood what you know what that position kind of means for that outside linebacker uh, position, and have both put some weight on and strength on. And and again, it clicked. And it, and it, that's that's what you want, you know. As you come into your senior season, guys that that you know at towards the end of their junior year realize that hey, this is I I need, it's my time. It's going to go quick and right. and and making sure that they're doing what they need to do. Yeah, that is true. It goes quick. Yeah, before I mean, you know, it'll you, be, yeah, it'll be this season will be <laughs> over. I mean, we we had this conversation last year. I mean, the yeah. first uh, few games of the year, and we were like, yeah, these guys got to realize it's quick, it's over, and then boom, it yeah. was over. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we ta- I think we talked about it. Um, at the end of the year, we had uh, Dakota was in here, and I think yeah. uh, Patrick. Uh, yeah. We had four, a couple, I think yeah. we had four or five yeah. guys. But they 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 said that they said it was it was over before I knew it. Right. And you don't know it until you know no, it. And, yeah. and yeah. Uh, yeah. you can tell them all. You know, there's not a lot of time. There's it, it goes fast, and and make sure you're taking advantage of your opportunities. Um, and you know, you're dialed in when it's right. when it's your turn to go. You gotta, right. and you're in the game. You really gotta don't squander an opportunity. Because you weren't mentally right. in the game or mentally taking a rep in practice or, you know, and, and that's hard. I mean, that's, that's hard to do, you know, as a human, regardless. Now you're asking 15, 16 and 17 and 18 year olds, right. you know, to do that. And, you know, it's that, that's difficult at times. So we, we, right. you know, we, we try to. It, it, it's funny because it's one of those things. I don't think until you get older, you start to, to well, yeah. you don't appreciate that because you're like, ah. It's no big deal. And then you get older and you find yourself, oh, man, I, I wish I hadn't yeah. done that, you know. I think there's a country song about that. There probably <laughs> is. I know. Hey, I want to give all these guys credit, I, but I, I do want to get to tomorrow night's game uh, real quickly. But just I, I want to mention these guys, uh, Buster Lawrence, because uh, yep. and these are guys who names, I, they're, they're names that I picked up in my pregame pre- or pre-show prep. Uh, Buster Lawrence, 6'1", 165. I see that a lot of these guys are kind of tall. They're, they're kind yeah. of big, tall drinks of water. Yeah, we're getting some height back there. That's yeah, kind of nice. Yeah, and uh, Carson Frakes yeah. uh, is one of your corners. Right. And now, uh, that's a guy that Jim and I are familiar with, and uh, he also played some receiver. That's right. You. Yeah, yep. and I have a feeling that's why I remember hearing his name so often. Yep. Uh, but I did remember seeing him on... He uh, played some corner uh, at the yes. Jamboree and played obviously played some wide receiver as well. Yeah, so that's a guy that I look for. He's one of my, uh, hey, here's a guy I want to make yep. sure I keep my eye on this year. Um, uh, you know, and just real quickly, too, I, I, I wanted to mention uh, Anthony Wadsworth, number uh, 44. He's a guy you and I talked about him before we got on the air, but he's one of the guys that I looked out there last uh, Friday night uh, as we were sitting there in the uh, at the Jamboree, and I said... There's something about that kid, and, and and I think I like it. And he looked like he's one of those kind of guys, that, and, I, and I'll say it. I said, you, you might have to reel him in every once in a while, but I am not going to take that guy's spirit yeah. away from him. And he looks like a tough, hard-nosed player. Tell me about he, that guy. He loves football about as much as he loves breathing. You know? <laughs> I he, can tell. I and, can tell. And, and and the weight room is, is right there after that. Yes. You know? And, yeah. you know, he's a great kid. He's a great Great spirit to have on the team brings a lot of emotion. Yes, uh, brings a lot of positive energy. But like you said a second ago, sometimes you gotta you gotta reel them in just a touch, uh, not too much, but make sure we're, that that we're on the same page on how we act, right. and how we do things on the field, and making sure we're not putting our team in jeopardy. I understand, and I because got, he is a very emotional kid. I mean, I, and, hey, and, Anthony, and, and you like that, Anthony. If you're listening, yeah, watch yourself, buddy. But, <laughs> reel uh, it in. <laughs> but we like what we see. That's we right. like what we see. And I did notice that I had Buster Lawrence uh, with a circle yeah. around his number yep. because I think he was one of the other guys that, he's that really come up, stood out. He yeah. did a nice. He's done a nice job this summer, and and has earned a, 
earned a spot there on defense. And, you know, really, again, it really kind of came to him about what he needed to do. And Because right. sometimes as a sophomore and even a junior, you're like, well, it's not my senior year. It's right. not my time. Yeah. Well, you know, when the thing that time? we try, right, yeah. exactly. And that's, if you're you out gotta, there, it's your turn. That's it's right. Your time. You've got to prep as it is your time and not lose, you know, and, and that's kind of always the message we're talking with, with young kids is don't wait. Don't wait to yeah. think, well, I'm only a sophomore or I'm only a junior. What? Right. Don't wait till you're a senior. You take advantage of every rep and everything that you're doing to get yourself better. You so you never know. I mean, it, it becomes next guy up. So, yep. yep. Well, let's get in tomorrow night. You have, uh, Jim, you want to take, take well, us off yeah, on this? So, yeah. uh, obviously, we're playing Harrisonville. And uh, last year, not really good. They weren't. They, I think they finished up four and, four and eight, if I recall, somewhere in there. But they do have a lot of returning guys yeah, this year. Do. One of them, I think, is their uh, quarterback, uh, quarterback, running back, River. and top receiver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. River yeah. Riley, I believe, is his name. Yeah. So um, one of the things in the in the pregame write-ups that you see that Mike was talking about, they talk about your youth, but they talk about a lot of their returning guys. Right. So what have you guys done to prepare for that? You know, I think with them, they're obviously a well-coached team, and, right. and they've got a great program there. And, you know, I think um, – for us to prepare for them is not knowing, you know, first game, you never really know right. what they're going to do. Did they, mm -hmm. you know, what do they do in their jamboree or what did they do? And, you know, is that really what they do? Or, you know, is it a smoke and mirror show sure, or whatever? Cause right. sometimes you just go out there and you try to try to work on something that, that you want to work on, you know, offensively or even defensively. And, um, you know, I think our preparation from them is, is uh, worrying about what we do and making sure that, that we're sound, um, and we understand that they could come out and whatever. The bottom right. line is defensively, get lined up, fly around, and get to the brown ball. Right. Offensively, know what your assignment is, regardless of what the play is. Know what you've got to do and follow your rules. You know, specifically talking up front with the offensive line. Um, and receivers go do your job. Laughlin's going to do his. I mean, that, and that's, you know, kind of worrying about making sure we understand what we need to do as opposed to, you know, how good or how you know what last year was last year i mean they're they're a much improved team because i think they finished you know they won their won their district yeah right. they started and off they started they start off real off. slow and the, and the funny thing is one of their parts of their slow start was against carney and uh you know they lost there and then they kind of talked about how uh, that kind of got the season off to a not good start but they did finish real strong plus right. they're returning these guys that Absolutely. are coming back so and then you've got the added, uh, you know, well, we're not going to let that happen to us again. Right. So you got that going. But then you bring up a good point. The jamboree's the jamboree. I don't know that anyone can really take a whole, no, a I whole think that's lot right. out right. of that. I mean, even if you had film of the whole, it's it's a preseason game. Yeah, right. Yeah. And, and yeah. you're, right. you know, it's not very often you get to fumble and then just go, okay, let's just bring it <laughs> bring back, back to do that again. And we do <laughs> try that again. So. Um. Yeah. It. It'll be. It'll be interesting. But it's an interesting. It's another thing that I was saying about what makes it so difficult with high school. You don't have a whole lot of intel you can work with, right? Because it's not like you have you know nine preseason games you can go watch video well, from no, and all no, that right. sort of thing. Yeah. And even from year to year, I mean, teams change it offense, changes, they right? change it's defense. The it's different yeah. kids. You may not have the same personnel, so you're you're doing different things to to utilize in high school. You know, you're not recruiting a you know, if you're a spread team, you're not recruiting all these receivers. I mean, you like you said, you you kind of have to tail your offense and defense around what you what you've got and, and right. around your strengths. Otherwise, you're doing a disservice yeah. to the kids and, and trying to ask too much of them of what they're capable of doing and what what they're what they're you know good at. Well, and it's kind of like you talked about. So with the the quarter their quarterback, the River um, River Riley, I think. Last year he was doing all these different things. This year he may not. Right. He may be strictly, you know, who knows what they're going to do with him. Uh, maybe you know, but yeah. uh, maybe they don't know. They may be sitting there. They may be in the coaches' meeting today, going, "What are we going to do with this guy?" I don't know. So, yeah. Well, they got some good athletes. I do know that, and you know, I they I think they're pretty decent size up front, and you know, the, it'll be a it'll be a good test for us uh, coming out in uh, game one for sure. I mean, we we're going to have to make sure. That that you know, like we talk about, it's it's not about who we're playing, whether they're right. the number one ranked team in whatever poll and whatever right. this is or that is, or they're down at the bottom. It, that 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 is zero relevance because you start thinking about that, then you're then where's your you know your mind's on on mm -hmm. 
on that piece as opposed to right. what we need to do and how we need to effectively operate. Take care well, of not, each play. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, everybody tomorrow will be zero and That's zero. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Just going to throw that That's out there. Right. And uh, it, it, is it still supposed to rain a little? Oh, man. Well, I, I think there's a 70% chance it's not. Okay, excellent. I like the sound. I like so that. you're optimistic, I, and I yeah. think that's in the morning. So, so yeah. by by the evening, I think I think we're going to be all clear. We'll be all right. Yep. Well, I remember last year on the home opener, if it it wasn't raining, but it was that real heavy mist. Yeah, yeah. Was that's just, right. It yeah. was yeah borderline miserable, right? honestly, but you still won. Yeah, <laughs> that's key. So we got that going for us. Well, coach, uh, which we, is nice. We are looking forward to tomorrow night. Uh, I know you can tell, you can feel it in here. Yeah, uh, we are so excited. It's great having you back. Uh, first first coaches show of the year and. Uh, great having you in here well i appreciate you guys having me here and and obviously all the all the things that you do for the school and and for the you know for obviously football and right. and and coming up and doing the games it's it's great to have the the energy of you three and 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 being a part of what we do and and you know your extension of the of the football program and yes. and, and valuable valuable to us because uh, you know we appreciate the the acknowledgement of of these young student athletes yeah. and and the things that they do and 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 get that out there it's our pleasure absolutely uh we're going to close it up for this week uh we'll talk to you the same time next yes. week here and yes, uh, hopefully we're talking about a, a bulldog victory so get out and get after them absolutely all and right we'll see you tomorrow night yes sir <laughs> all right thanks so much for listening folks you've been listening to the coach gray show thanks so much for being with us we'll see you next week